tonight on The Bill. Get out of You won't put me down! A couple met when she visited him in prison on learning of his conversion to the Christian path. <laughs> Uh, she asked you a question. Bloody hell. You owe me, Ronnie. Uh, Magpie Villas, a uh, pair of semis on four acre drive, number 146. Uh, there's a Mrs. Gorry been on uh, reporting her next door neighbour missing. She sounds a bit worried. Oh, Mrs. Gorry. Good afternoon. PC Page from Sun Hill, and this is PC Rickman. You better come in. Right. First time, another two flights await them down that part of the court. Turn it off, John. Please, they've come about. Yeah, I know what they've come about. You're too late. Six months ago, you might have done something to help her. Like, uh, lock him up. Can you tell us the problem, Mrs. Gorry? Rosie, she's called. Rosie Butterworth. Haven't seen her for two days. It was Friday we last heard her. Heard her? They had a row. And what time was this? Just after ten, went on till nearly eleven. At first, she was screaming, trust me, James, trust me. And then, they're somewhere safe, trust me. There was crashing and banging and things hitting the wall upstairs and downstairs. It was like he was throwing furniture about. And her, uh, at the end, just saying, no, James, no. It was horrible. Did he say anything? Didn't raise his voice, did he, John? No, <laughs> didn't need to. Then it went quiet. Deathly quiet, and we heard nothing more till the morning. Must have been about 6.30, still dark, heard the front doors open, footsteps, car door, car drove off. Well, did you get up to look? Hmm? So you didn't actually see anyone in the car? Well, wouldn't have seen her, would we, if she was in the boot? Not seen or heard either of them since. She even missed church on Sunday. She's never missed church. And how long's that been? Uh, uh, eight years. Had they read before? Mm -mm. Or did she say anything to you? Anything to make you think? Did she talk about him? Oh, we didn't. You know, just good morning. So what makes you think there's anything suspicious, Mrs Gorry? I mean, couldn't they have just gone off on their holidays? You know, a bit of winter sun. Maybe she mislaid the passports. Winter sun? What are you talking about, winter sun? Well, people do. Not when they're on parole, they don't. Oh, don't tell me she didn't tell you. Tell us what, Mr Gorry? You silly... Ma, I didn't like to. Not on my phone. Speak of the people. Go and get the bloody book, woman. This is my friend Sam. Sam, meet Ronnie. Ronnie, tell him all about yourself. I, I don't know what you want me to say. Uh, you don't know where to begin? <laughs> well, let's start with what you do for a living, shall we? Were you work in an office? Oh. A shop? I gamble. Pardon? I gamble. You're a gambler. You're a professional gambler. Horses, cards, roulette. Horses, dogs sometimes. So most of the bookies in this manner would know your boat race. Yeah. And would you say that you're a success at this uh, game? Well, it's up and down, you know. But mostly down. I've had a bad run. Tell him about Santa Claus, Ronnie. Oh, give us a break. You just tell him. The client, the what? I don't know his name. What's he look like? Black hair, grease back. Age? I don't know, 40 maybe. A big little what? You know. Average. And Mr Average gives you money to gamble with, doesn't he? 46-year-old churchgoer Rosie Parkin today became a real-life Sarah Brown when she made an honest man of former heavyweight boxer James George Butterworth. The couple met when she visited him in prison on learning of his conversion to the Christian bath. Butterworth, otherwise known as Jimmy the Lisp, 
This is my neighbour, Jimmy the Lisp, was serving a 15-year sentence for manslaughter. Killed a chap with his bare hands. Manslaughter. How can you break somebody's neck with your bare hands and call it an accident? Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe he lost his... 15 years. But he only served nine, didn't he? They let him out after nine, it's kind of them. Well, for good behaviour, I... Well, now she knows how well he can behave. Pulled her head off, I shouldn't be surprised. Oh, John! And the point is, in case you missed it, he lives next door to us. So how come you weren't in the bookies on the Kellett Lane spreading Mr Average's hard-earned bees and honey like you said you would be? Look, Between 2 and 4pm. He don't always come across. Well, we've got a couple of colleagues in CID who are not amused. Because I told them that you would be there investing Mr Average's what in the bookies on the Kellett Lane where they spent their afternoon watching OAPs punting their milk money. You see, the thing is, Ronnie, they think you've been telling Porkies to make Nick look stupid. Which, of course, he does. When's your next meet, Ronnie? OK, you wasted your time. I'm sorry about that, but it doesn't mean it was a bum steer. You said it yourself, Nick. Your sauce was a little... <laughs> a bit iffy. He seemed OK, didn't he, Sam? You've been at. Just admit it so we can forget it. Do you want anything else? Do you mean the list, eh? Good well, idea. Rather you than me. Anyway, Debbie McAllister's handling it now. She seems pretty excited about it. You can see their point, sir. From his record, this guy is very scary. Ah, Jimmy the Lisp. Well, his wife could have just up and left. I mean, these Beauty and the Beast marriages weren't exactly built to last, were they? Yeah, but if it's her house, she's unlikely just to go away and leave him there, is she? They had a good look, did they? Yeah, nobody was in, sir. Nothing to see. There's not a lot to go on. Oh. The judge drew the jury's attention to a serious and possibly ineradicable compulsion to violence in the defendant. Well, you better search the place, then. Turn my lights out, will you? So there's a firm laundering money through bookmakers on and off the course. Says who, Guff? Well, it's not an unreasonable deduction. Run it past us again, will you, Nick? Right. My source says he's being offered stake money. The client... Client? <laughs> you heard him? Yeah. Thank you, Sam. It's what he calls them. The client gives him an envelope full of notes, and what he's got to do is spread bet, mostly back in the favourites and uh, returning exactly half of what was given. In clean money, and he takes a difference, yeah. It's known as a slinger. So what's the problem? Well, the problem is, Gov, do we believe it? Well, it makes sense to me. So when's the next meet with the client? There's no way he'll tell us, sir, and even if he didn't, we tried to wire him, he'd be too nervous, he'd uh, blow a fuse, Gov. So why did he call you? Is this a wind-up? Because he wants out and they won't let him. Until they've laundered the dirty money. All right, thank you, Nick. Right, we're going to continue the obo on betting shops and gambling houses. Oh, come, on. come on, you two. What is it? Excuse me. I'd like to report a missing person. I'll take care of this. And the name is Sir? Butterworth. James Butterworth. Saying, Sarge, is he seemed really worried. Reason to be. I mean, worried about her. Big bloke, is he? Form two. So let's be on our toes. Mr. Butterworth? Yeah. DS McAllister. You've met PC Page, haven't you? Hello, Mr. Butterworth. This is PC Stamp. You haven't heard from your wife, have you, since last night? We've come to have a look around, Mr Butterworth. It's just routine. You'd be amazed how many people who go missing turn up in their own homes. First place we look. Can we come in? Have you had a cup of tea this morning, Mr Butterworth? Well, you look like you need one. Do you want to witness the search? So where'd you keep it then?
Well... If you mean if I found a body, no, Sarge. Best I can do, an address book. Well, both bedrooms are trashed. And the back room. Like someone looking for something. Well, they're in a strop. So are you Jimmy or James when you're at home, Mr Butterworth? She calls me James. Look, you know, if we're going to find her, you're going to have to tell us a bit more. You had a row, didn't you? What was it about? Did you hit her, Mr Butterworth? I never hit her. I never hit her! Yeah, all right, take it easy. It's just that Mrs Gorry said that she heard something like, no, James, no. They're safe, trust me. What's safe? Her. Well, you don't get on, then. Rosie said... Rosie said what? She said she were going to... Look, I lose it sometimes, but... I never hit a woman. I believe you. She said... She what? What's been going on, Mr Butterworth? The place has been wrecked. Yeah, Mr Butterworth was just about to tell me what happened Friday night, Sarge. Is that when you turn the place over? Hmm? What were you looking for, Mr Butterworth? Well, it must have been something important. Well, you told me last night that when you woke up Saturday morning, Rosie had gone. But you went off somewhere as well, didn't you? In your car. Where? Where did you go, Mr Butterworth? Drove round looking for her. For two days. James! James! Plymouth. Plymouth? Is that where you went? What, you think she got on a ferry? Where to? Spain. That's where you think she is. Is this what you're proud about, going to Spain? Probation officer. Said I couldn't. Not for a while yet, he said. So Rosie went without you? Or did anyone see you in Plymouth? Anyone who might remember seeing you? Well, you were away a night. Where did you stay? Car. Do you think you could join us out here, Miss Butterworth? Now, this seems to be Mrs Butterworth. So with his permission, you can check out any leads back at the station. I think we're done in here. I'll send Tony out to check the garden. Sarge. Right. Mr Butterworth. Found anything, have you? More private in prison, it were. Safer, too, for the rest of us. Well, Mr Butterworth, PC Stamp is going to have a last look around, if that's all right for you. If that's all right. Tony, check out the garage and the garden. I'm going back with Polly. Are these anything special? Well, Mr Butterworth, where'd you find them, Tony? You do recognise them, don't you? See what you can turn up. Come on, Polly. Let's go. Hang on. Uh, hang on. You said... You wanted. Oh, thank you. Did she have it done specially? When I were inside. Well, I'll look after it. Well, you really need to be out there in the garden.
You better witness this, Mr. Butterworth. Do you recognise this? What got there? Jacobs and Rothworth Jewellers. I think we'd better check this one out at the station, Mr Butterworth. If you want mind coming with me. PC Page from Sun Hill. We're trying to trace a Mrs Butterworth. You may have known her as Rosie Parkin. Yeah, we found your name and number in her address book. Not for ten years. OK, no, nothing to worry about. Thank you. Bye. So, it's not your gun. You didn't know it was there, you've never seen it before. That's what you're saying. Is that what you're saying, Mr Butterworth? Yeah. So, who does it belong to? Mr. Butterworth. I'll take that as I don't know. Your wife, maybe. What she want with a gun? I wonder. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. It's PC Page, Met Police. I'm following up a missing person. Sure. Time. I'll phone a number in her address book under Cecil and get put through to Longmarsh Prison. Longmarsh? Yeah, and another thing, Rosie Butterworth didn't go to Spain. Well, not from Plymouth, anyway. There's no ferry Saturday or Sunday. Nothing till Friday. Channel Islands, maybe, but not Spain. Yeah, I was wondering, you don't happen to have a prisoner there by the name of Cecil? I don't know, just Cecil. Cecil something or something Cecil. Yeah, I'll hold. No glove, no prints on the gun. And no form connecting Jimmy to the weapons. Any job he was on, he was the weapon. You let him go? No choice. Well, if he's not a shooter, what's eating him? It's not what was there, Gov, it's what wasn't there in the bag. It's a bit of a coincidence, isn't it? I mean, it was a Jacobs and Rothwell job we got him sent down in 91. Yeah, but records say everything was recovered before the trial, the whole lot. Well, records can be wrong. Maybe he had a nest egg, Mrs B robbed it and L disappeared. Right. So, I don't know what he last night. That's right, it was nearly two, wasn't it? I'm going to try Jimmy's prison chaplain. OK. Help Jimmy find the Lord, see where he leads me. Thank you, sir. Nice of you to drop by, lads. Yep. Well, we're at the casino till late last night. And? Uh, nothing, Gov. Oh, that's funny. Gov? Well, their bank reported £1,500 of the counterfeit money in their last night's cash returns. So where did you say you were? Tumbling, Tumbling Dice Casino. Straight up, Gov. And you didn't notice anything? Right, well, you better get back down there and take some statements. You know, we're meant to be keeping one step ahead of this, not one step behind. And after that, I want you to go onto the dog track. You're going to be looking for whatever it was you missed last night. Gov, nobody bit serious money at the dog track. Well, if they do, they'll stand out, won't they? Glad you could spare the time. I'm concerned for Jimmy. For Jimmy? How is he? He's all right. We're a bit more worried about his wife. <sighs> She's only got herself to... Uh... I don't mean to, um, though I have to say I'm, uh, I'm afraid I found something, if not distasteful, I'd say uh, opportunist about her visits. You assumed she was a gold digger? Uh, she claimed to have been called to him. Let's say I doubted the divine nature of the voice which was calling. It's not uncommon, you know. Women of a certain disposition who earmark violent criminals for their prurient attentions. Uh, James was secure in his faith and sincere in his penitence before she appeared. You believe that? Cynicism is an inevitable a corollary of your occupation, Sergeant, but I assure you it is misplaced in this instance. So you think Rosie got in the way of Jimmy's rehab? I think she confused him with thoughts of a kind which had never previously troubled him. Oh, here he is. Georgie. George Pye. George, sit down. 
George was close to Jimmy, and, uh, and uh, they served together as my altar attendants. My brother, he said you and him was mates. Yeah, we were. Shall I tell you what he said about you? Well, there's no need to get personal. Look, you owe me, Ronnie. I paid you for information. Oh, no, I know. Look, if you put it on a horse that came last, that is your problem. You still owe me. Don't think I'll forget, because I won't. I will be on your back till I get my money's worth. Oh, hold up. What I've got to tell you, Georgie, is that it's in Jimmy's best interests. She called in James. I'll tell you the truth, Georgie. Some people think he's killed her. I don't. I think she ran away with something very precious to Jimmy. But you've got to help me for Jimmy's sake. What is it that was so precious to Jimmy? He told you, didn't he, Georgie? You don't want that on your conscience, do you? Hmm? Jimmy going back to prison for murder. Do you? Look, Nick! Can I call you Nick? You're not gonna like this, Nick. There is. Fair and square. He served his time for him. What are, Georgie? When they did the jewellers, there was uh, some diamonds. Not in the safe, uh, in a drawer. Jimmy trousered them. Well, no one noticed. He got them away and he hid them before he was arrested. And the jewellers never declared them? <sighs> because they were hot. If you nick something from somebody who shouldn't have, they're yours, you see. By right. I'm afraid the belief is widespread. Part of prison culture. Uh, Jimmy said it was meant. A gift from God. Morning, Mr. Butterworth. I just wanted to ask you a quick question. Can I come in? I was just wondering about Rosie's family. You know, her mum and dad. Brothers or sisters? Friends? Excuse me, do you have a minute? My husband would like a word. When you got married, who came to the wedding? You must remember someone, Mr. Balworth. Newspaper people. No one else. It's rather important. Oh, nothing doing. They're by the front door. But the phone is just here. And it hasn't stopped all morning. 9.05 it started. Next was 9.37 and then 9.55. Now, every time he answers, he says the number and whoever it is rings off. Now, what do you think that means? Means they want to talk to her and not to him. In my view. He's got a visitor! Can I help you? Um, I don't... Are you looking for the Butterworths? Rosie? You're Mr... Can I come in? Well, I'm afraid Rosie's away at the moment. You didn't tell me your name. I'm Rosie's husband. <laughs> you what? Put me Mr. down! Mr. Bowers! <laughs> she asked you a question. He can't answer you with your hand round his throat, now can he, Jimmy? Let him go. Let him go, James! Ask him again. Well, just give him a bit more room first, yeah? Come on. Right, I know this is an unusual position to be questioned by a police officer, but can you start by telling us your name? Name's Preddy. Cecil Preddy? That's right. And you're... Daddy now, James. You're married to Rosie. 
<laughs> you see, I don't think James knew that Rosie was married before. Before? Before he married her. <laughs> Cass, so when did you and Rosie get married? 1993, June. And when did you go to prison? 1994, February. Life. Served eight years, nearly. Murder, were it? Oh, yes. He was blackmailing me. I'd found an interesting way of making money in the banking line. He rumbled me. He wanted to go halves. I could only ever work solo. I rigged a heater in his office so as he'd electrocute himself. Never have been found out. Only I told Rosie, and she made me confess. You went to the police? And told them where the body was. She said she didn't want to live her life dreading a knock on the door and that sins must be atoned for. She said she'd wait for me. Where did you do your time? Last few years in Longmarsh. The chapel in there. Redmayne. Thinge and Redmayne, that thing. Oh, lovely vibe. Oh. Lord, hear us when we cry to thee for those in peril on the sea. Now, this is a man in the know. If he ever gives you the name of a horse, jump on it quick, cos he's well-connected, that lad. Eyes and ears everywhere. <laughs> Even people in high places listen to him. Sam, I'd like a quiet word when you finished your coffee. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, Paul, uh, Mrs Gorry's been on again. A message from her husband this time. Uh, seems there's a hell of a commotion coming from next door. Over. Sierra Oscar from 8-5. Show us attending. Over. Everybody starts to kill each other. Would you mind telling me what's going on? It's just a bit of fun, that's all, Sarge. Nick Klein didn't find it funny. No, he didn't. Come on, you must remember what it's like being the butt of a joke. It's harassment, that's what it is. And it's going to stop. Understood? Yes, Sarge. Mr. Prezi, are you all right? Yes. What, both of you? James, is that nice young policewoman? She wants to know if we're all right. Yeah, thank you. Well, we've had reports of banging and stuff. We've been moving furniture, putting things back. <laughs> Making up his room. Uh, uh, right, uh, well, sorry to have disturbed you. Oh, Mr. Pretty, you don't remember if Rosie had any family, do you? Mum and Dad, yeah. Well, still alive. They weren't too fond of me. Old man parking, especially. Do you remember the address? Catford Way. Tell you how to get there, just about. She may have skipped it to dodge husband number one, God, but she skipped it with a bag full of stones. Well, Cecil Preddy might have a few bob as well. I talked to this mate of mine in the old fraud squad. His speciality was hacking into banks moving cash from one account to another, then converting it into banker's drafts. Yeah, before he decided to kill someone. See, the bank kept it all very hush-hush, because it made their security look very amateur, and they didn't want the shareholders to find out. Gov? You need to have something to tell you. So what's that, Nick? I've just heard from my source, Gov. It's all over. The uh, client's not handing out any more stake money. Which means they've done what they needed to do. I suppose so, sir. Which means that instead of having a sack full of funny money, they've now got a sack full of clean money. And all we can do is watch the funny stuff dribble in note by note. Go on, Nicky. Go. Well, the page has got half an address for Rosie's parents. I think it's best she went in plain clothes. Don't want to scare anyone off. Yeah, fine. Perhaps she should take a detective with her. You never know. Might learn something. Dan, why don't you stay and watch the back? Rosie's. Me? 
Mikasa, Sukasa. Cup of tea? Oh, no, thank you. I can't stop. Who is it? It's a friend of Rosie's. Peter? In a minute. Strange young man watching the back of our house. He's with me. What's he doing round there then? Well, he's a bit shy. I told him to wait round the back. It's a young man, too shy to come in. <laughs> oh, you worry sometimes. You know, we've got a lot of very valuable things in this house, you see. Uh, how was I? Oh, yeah. I'm afraid um, Rosie's not in at the moment. But you are expecting her? I should hope so. I know what you mean, though. She can leave of a morning, Aunt Rosie, and you won't see her again for a whole year. But she wouldn't miss her own wedding. I love a wedding, me. I've been married three times myself. The first Mrs Parkin left. I came back from the war, knocked on the door, no one there. Oh. But after seven years, you know, if you never see them, it's a clean slate. So then I married Rosie's mum, God rest her. And then there's two years now. Who's to say she's the last? <laughs> this is Rosie's second. Well, the first one disappeared just like mine. Mind you, I never liked him. Uh, I don't care now, though, do I? He's had his seven years. Any idea where Rosie is now, Mr Parkin? It's just I need to see her about something. It's a bit urgent. Well, if I know my Rosie, she'll be up west spending money. Uh, unless... Uh, well, what day is it? It's Wednesday. Down the dogs. She can't seem to get enough of them these days. More money, mind you. She can afford it. Is that him? <laughs> oh, plucked up courage now, have you? Next time, come into the house. Don't hide round the back. No way to treat a girl. <sighs> Don't ask questions, just keep walking. <sighs> ask me where we're going next. Where are we going next? What? Bye! The next time you receive information from a so-called source, have the decency to run it past one of us first, eh? Back off, Mick. Before you skip upstairs with it. Cos I don't like being told I'm swinging the ledge just cos you've been taken for a ride. Muppet. Have you been skipping upstairs again, Nick? You. Back in your box. Come on, Harrison! Rosie Parkin? Or is it Preddy? Or should I say Mrs Butterworth? Police? Do you deny marrying James Butterworth six months ago while still being legally married to Cecil Preddy? No. Well, in that case, you're under arrest. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Uh, would you mind if we left here quietly? Do you see back there? That chap in the camel coat, slick back hair. Actually, he dies in. He's my intended. Wedding tomorrow, Spain on Friday, that was the idea. He might cut up rough if he sees me go off in handcuffs. All right, well, I'll be right behind you then. Take each other's hand and we bow our heads and give thanks. We have found each other at last, O oh Lord, and for that we are truly grateful. Amen. 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 Right, I'm going to need a word with you. Just wait here, boys. 
Rosie has done a silly sin. You can guess what's happened, can't you? No, don't interrupt and I'll explain. Ah, don't contradict me, Cecil. Those two were parked outside the house. They must have followed us in. Yeah, and you know who they are, don't you? Rosie. I have told no. you before, Cecil. Say the words. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. A joyful? A joyful thing it is to be thankful. Oh, <laughs> yes. That's better. Now, boys, I need a word with this young lady. Um, do you know, I didn't ask you what your name was. It's PC Payne. No, not your official name. Polly, and this is Danny Glaze. Then I need a word with you, Polly. Uh, you know the man I pointed out to you before with the hair and the coat? Yeah. Well, I thought he was such a nice man when I met him. He took me to a casino the other day and gave me money to bet with. Say that again. Oh, There's no need to say anything to them. So, well, I just thought it was a bit of fun, but, you know, I've been thinking he may not be what he seems. He had such a lot of money on him, you wonder where he got it from. I mean, maybe he's not such a nice man after all. And I was watching him before you came along. Do you know, he was giving money to those two men he was with. He seems to make a habit of it. If this is a wind-up... All right. Down into uniform. Yes. As fast as I can. If you don't mind, I think we should be on our way. I really don't want to be here, you know? Dan? Dan needs to stay here, don't you, dear? Do what has to be done. I'll come with you in the car, Polly. The two boys will follow us. <laughs> I don't think they're going to let me out this night now, do you? Well? Go on. Right, coming in, Rose. Boys! So what did you tell them? That I was a silly, silly woman. Oh, not a clever, clever one. Silly. I thought John Gregory could be saved. And they bought it. Whosoever carries true forgiveness in his heart already knows the taste of heaven. Did you just make that up? Words come to me. It's a gift. trying to get out before Cecil came home. John's a very attractive man. Turned my head, I suppose. And then when Cecil ran up panicked. Yeah, but were you really going to marry him? A special ceremony at my dad's church before we caught the ferry. Nothing too legal, I suppose. Just enough to take in whoever needed taking in. I don't know what you mean, dear. Innocence itself. There's none of us innocent, Polly. All wicked sinners. Maybe too late. I don't think he's carrying. Unloaded on his slingers. Here with you. Look up. Left. Yeah. Got you. See the bloke in a camel coat? Black here, name of Gregory. You take him, I'll go with the other two. Yeah, go ahead.
I'm arresting you on conspiracy to defraud. You do not have to say anything. If you do not mention one question, something which you're later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Let's get this straight. You didn't realise Cecil Preddy was in prison. You just thought he had deserted you. Rosie, you're not doing yourself any favours. It's what James has got to believe. Otherwise... But sometime after your marriage to James Butterworth, you began a relationship with John Gregory. Do you recognise this woman? For the benefit of the tape, the suspect's being shown a photograph of Rosie Butterworth. When did you meet him? A few days ago. Well, we are witnesses who saw you together at the Tumbling Dice Casino on Monday night. Oh, yeah. Bad likeness. I witnessed John Gregory hand you a large sum of money. What was it for? Tips? Tips! Both slingers were carrying counterfeit currency. Not enough to say they didn't pick it up through the on-course bookies, though. And Gregory was clean. Well, it would be. But if we can establish a list of bookies, betting shops and casinos whose banks have reported this stuff in their cash takings, we should have enough people to identify Gregory to satisfy the CPS. The trouble is, we haven't got anything to hold him on while we do. The one Danny arrested, Gov. Meekins. Ronnie. Would you mind if I had a word with him, please, sir? <laughs> Turn it in, Nick, we up. Be my guest. Thank you, Gov. <laughs> Information received suggests that James is in possession of diamonds, illegally held by Jacobs and Rothworth, the jewellers, and undeclared by them at the time of the robbery in 1991. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, can you explain the presence of a velvet Jacobs and Rothworth bag along with a handgun in your cold frame? No. The handgun's not yours. <laughs> what would I want with a handgun? Right. Interview terminated at 5.05 p.m. I'm now without the crap. When you told me it was over, you were expecting another bag full, right? You lie to me! I pay you for information and you give me this information. That in itself is a criminal offence. We can just add it on. We've got enough on you already, my old son. More than enough of what you told me a few days ago. And if you remember rightly, can you just let uh, Sam in, please, Ian? Hello, Ronnie. You didn't just tell me, did you? Procedure. <laughs> Procedure these days is to, um, is to have a witness. See? Now, you listen. Now, this is just my view. No promises. But in my view, the difference between you going down the steps and staying outside is whether or not you cooperate. And I mean cooperate, Ronnie! John Gregory's going down for sure. Which, in my view, makes life a lot easier for you outside than it does in. No crap. That necklace you're wearing. Do you like it? Looks expensive. New, is it? My John bought it for me. Excuse me, sir. I think you'll find that Ronnie Meekins is ready to make a full statement, which will name John Gregory as a supplier of several thousand pounds worth of counterfeit currency. What? Well, I just spoken to him. He's no use to me now, of course, but he was my source. Right, well, I think you two should finish the job, don't you? Oh, an apology would be nice, Michael. Well, I have to advise you that we will be making reports to the CPS, who may decide to summon you to answer the charge of bigamy. Does that mean I can go? Got a result, Debbie? 
I think they might get wrong bigamy. What's that? A suspended sentence and a bit of counselling. In the interest of saving the marriage? Yeah, well, she can live off one husband's illegal pension fund and top it up with the other's diamonds. Yeah, and she'll even have to dip into that sack full of freshly laundered money. But she'll almost be certainly right. keeping for John Gregory. I think she'll visit him in prison. Do your job and I'll leave you alone. Mess me around and I will bury you. 